Mom. Mom, this way. Builders found a body. What? Builders, they found the body. Buried inside this old drainage tunnel. Been there a while, by the look of things. Here you are. Well, I want this whole area cordoned off. And no one leaves without my say-so. Oh, you're going to need this. Health and safety. Right. Malcolm! I'm coming. Malcolm! I'm coming. I wonder when you join us. Yeah, well, get your foot on the bottom of that ladder. I'm coming down. Careful. I don't know exactly what these tunnels are made of. Yeah, well, they were built to drain water from the mines. There's plenty of them hidden away. Oh, well, it can't have been used for a while, then. Oh, you're blinding me. Oh, sorry. Bodies over here. What's left of him? So, uh, what can you tell us? Well, not much, really. Um, he's male, five foot ten. His boots are still fairly intact. How long has he been down here? Well, ten years at least. He's got quite a distinctive belt buckle, you see. What is that? An anchor? Hmm, sailor. Merchant navy, perhaps? Or someone who worked down at the shipyard. Oh, he's missing two fingers on his left hand, but that's probably down to the local vermin having a nibble. Yeah, well, the rats aside, what was it that killed him? A blunt trauma injury. He's taken a real bash to the back of the skull. So he's a solid and his body dumped. How'd he get down here? Well, there must be another access point here somewhere. Well, get the rest of this covered excavated. Oh, well, you know I love a challenge. Uh, well, I'll get the scene locked down. You'll have the site for yourselves. Bliss. Any idea who it is, then? Not yet, love. Oh, this is what happens when you start cutting corners. Oh, so you've worked on the side for a while, then? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the gaffer uh, made a point of hiring us personally. Yeah. Safe pair of hands. Well, we need you to give us a statement. You can talk to one of my officers. Side contract has arrived. He wants to speak to whoever's in charge. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. DCI Vera, Stan Hope, now I take it this is your build. Foreman called the office, said they found a body. That tunnel never showed up on the survey. Is this any relation to Leonard Sidden? That'll be me dad. He used to run a club on this site. Oh, he's been retired a while now, ill health. He became Whitley Bay's Mr. Big back in the day. You've seen the known pretty well. Oh, I. We all did, made it our business too. Yeah, the family might have had a bad rep. We've put all that behind <laughs> us. I'm, I'm just trying to make an honest living. Well, I'm glad to hear the Siddons have cleaned up their act. I can't pay these lads to stand idle. Oh, well, I can't help that, law. You'll be digging no more holes until forensics are finished. i better go and break the bad news. Ah, you do that. Ah, it just takes you back, eh, Kenny? Huh. Have you spent many a night in the... The seagull? Mm. <laughs> Not really, Marcy, Mum. Get on to George down in Nispers. Get him to pull out the file on Robbie Marshburn. Well, there's a ghost in the past. Aye. Well, I'm afraid he might have come back to haunt us. <sighs> Mum. Robbie Marshburn. Went missing June 1995. Oh, look at him. Butter wouldn't melt. Bit of a thug by all accounts. Oh, there'd have been plenty of people glad to see the back of him, George. And if this is Marshburn, makes me wonder what else we're going to dig up. I've seen a live at a nightclub. Mm, seagull. Plush club in Whitley Bay. I've never been one for dancing. Two left feet. And not a hundred yards from where we found him. I've uh, got some prints up on the PNC. Ah, not much left of his fingers, George. His mum reported him missing. If she's kept hold of any of his personal effects, we could send him off for DNA testing. She's still with us? Eleanor Marshboy lives in the same house addressing World's End. I never 
got round to throwing them out. You thought he might have been coming home. Oh, I always knew Robbie was dead. He'd have never left me here on my own. Taken off with no warning. Now, we found a buckle, love, quite near to where. Um, can I ask you to have a look at it? Oh. I bought him that belt for his 21st birthday. Well, we knew he worked at the shipyard. Burton Morgan. Like his dad before him. The river was in his blood. Now, can I take you back to the night he went missing? Oh, they were... They were thrown a party. Leonard Siddons' birthday must have been his 50th, I suppose. And our Robbie had to do all the arrangements. Important people to impress. Everything had to be just right. Well, we know your son spent some time in Young Offenders. Robbie wasn't a bad boy. Not the person they made him out to be. Well, at least now I can mourn him. Adults. His remains were found this morning on the links at Whitley Bay, the victim of a violent assault. And we're working on the hunch that this is a fella called Robbie Marshburn. Reported missing 25th of June 1995. See, we assume he was murdered around about the time he disappeared. I might reckon that's 23 years. The last known sighting was at a club called The Seagull. And what's left of it stands on the site where these remains were found. Yeah, I remember Robbie Marshburn from my days on the beaten walls end. Must be going back a bit, Kenny. Uh, he was an old school union man. Robbie and his heavies virtually run the port. Oh, he was running a racket. <laughs> Which brings me to Leonard Sidden. Now, he owned this club back in its glory days. Sidden fancied himself as a bit of a gangster. Got chased out of the east end of London, set up here. And he used this club as a front for all kinds of shenanigans. But nothing ever stuck. Always came up squeaky clean. So Robbie and Sidden were working together? Now, Robbie was Sidden's fixer. He used his contacts on the river to make them both money. This is the club that caught fire then? Aye, completely gutted. Suspected arson. I mean, it had to be an insurance job. What makes you so sure? What, Leonard Sidden? That's what. He's a devious piece of work. Ah, uh, the old man must be getting on now, eh? Well, it's the son running things now, isn't it? Right. Sidden Holdens. And they've diversified into property. I mean, there's development down on the seafront. Um, I've been looking through the, uh, the builder's statements from the site, ma'am. Uh, nothing we can work with. Although, according to the log sheet, one of them left without giving our officers a formal statement. Scott Keane. Right. Well, one of you follow that up, Jack. You're well, opening up a cold case after 23 years. Yes, you're dead right I am. Marshburn might have been a reprobate, but I'm still going to find out who killed him. And my money is on the Siddons. Mr. Keane?
front door was open. I should have called for backup. Yeah, well, you weren't to know you were going to find this. He was there yesterday asking questions, said he was mates with a gaffer. Well, someone hit him with that door stop. It's been wiped clean. This wasn't premeditated. Grabbed whatever was close at hand. Might have disturbed a burglar. Well, there's no sign of a forced entry. Anyway, his wallet's still here. And his laptop. Let's get that checked out. What about his mobile? We still haven't found one. We'll pull out his phone records. Let's see if that can tell us anything. None of the neighbours saw anything unusual. What about CCTV? There's a couple of cameras on the railway. Well, we need to go through those tapes. He'd only been here a few weeks. Kept himself to himself, by all accounts. Well, he's wearing a wedding ring. So there's got to be a wife somewhere. A couple of kids as well. I take it you and your husband were separated. We've been living apart for a while. If you don't mind me asking, love, did your husband walk out or did you send him packing? It was a decision. Any reasons we should know about? Scott had a bit of a drink problem. He got him sacked from his last job. He barely worked since. Uh... So how was he spending his spare time down the pub? He'd fallen in with a few local raggies, pubs and clubs in the Farrell Road. You know what it's like. Oh, hi. Well, maybe one of these raggies had it in for him. Oh, Scott was harmless. Bit of a chancer, that's all. Well. He got himself a job in the end, though, didn't he? This contract down at the building site. No, that was something to me. I knew the Siddons were hiring, so I uh, got in touch. You know the Siddons, then? Aye, plenty of people do. In a minute, love. Mummy's talking. Hey, you shouldn't be on your own, love. Not at a time like this. I'll be fine. We can get on to victim support. Send some I didn't need them sticking their noses in. No? OK. All right. Well, what about family? Your mum, your dad? Mum's dead. Dad's not around much. Could you not call him? He's in prison. Well, what's he in for, if you don't mind me asking? I thought you would have known. Corruption is one of your lot. Used to be a copper. John Brace. I think we should keep things formal, don't you? It's DCI stand up now, and this is my colleague, DS Healy. Detective Inspector John Brace, as we're keeping things formal. X. Well, I don't get many visitors. People give Ben Coppers a wide berth in here. We found a body. Site of the old Seagull nightclub. And we've ID'd it as Robbie Marshburn. You remember him, don't you, John? Must be more than 20 years since he disappeared. Mm -hmm. I always assumed he'd done all that. He was last seen alive at that club. One of your favourite haunts. I showed me face there on occasion. Did you show your face in there the night of Siddons 50th? I was out with my wife that night. Police Federation dinner. All those years ago. And he still remembers a clash in his diary. Our department had solved a big case. My DCI was there to receive a commendation. I know they took photographs. Got them pinned up on your cell wall, have you? Recognise that fella? Aye, what about him? He was murdered last night.
I need to talk to my daughter. Yeah, well, that can be arranged as soon as we've finished talking to you. Now, this fella was working on the site where we found this fella's body. What are the chances, eh? Party asked us to put a word in, said he needed to work. I uh, called in a favour with Sidden, did you? Your old mate. I've never been there for her. I was trying to make amends, that's all. Oh, she kept her under wraps. She's never mentioned at your trial you had a daughter. Do you even tell your missus? Aye, she knew. Bobby was given up for adoption. So who was the band's man? That's none of your business. Well, we think these two murders are connected. And now that we finally found Robbie Marshburn, I'm gonna find out who it was killed him. We're done here. I'm sorry I missed the funeral. I hear there was quite a turnout. That funeral that you mentioned, who did he mean? Oh, oh, that's that's nothing that concern you. You getting in? This brief, shall we? My husband gets easily tired. Scott Keane was found murdered in his flat in Bemerton last night. Gopher down at the site. Alec told us this morning. Mm. And we know it was John Brace asked you to give Keane that job. Yeah, he got in touch. First time in years. Old boys network still alive and kicking then. Mm. Call in a favour, did he? I don't owe Brace anything. No. Oh. Well, in that case, it must be down to your guilty conscience. He's banged up for his retirement, and here's you, free as a bird, sitting enjoying the view. The body we found on your building site has been confirmed as Robbie Marshburn, last seen leaving your club night of your birthday bash. Yeah, he worked at the Seagull for a couple of years. Security. No, 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 no. No, he was more than that. We know you two were thick as thieves. He was your Mr. Fixit for the Sidden Syndicate. Do you think I'd have let him renovate that site if I'd known he was buried there? Well, the site's been idle for years. Maybe you thought it was worth the risk. You've been listening to too many rumours. Now, here's the thing that's been worrying me. You're connected to both of these murders. Robbie Marshburn might be history. But the past has a way of catching up with us. 23 years, that's a long time to live with a guilty conscience. Hmm? It's time for your pills, man. We'll see ourselves out. thinks he's untouchable after all these years. Well, you think the Siddons are up to their old tricks, using Scott Keane as their eyes and ears? Well, why not? Keane was a bit of a loner, estranged from his wife and kids. It was Brace who got him that job. Maybe she knew he was up to no good. Maybe that's why Paddy threw him out. Well, that would explain the crust on her, pretending to be on top of things. Mom, uh, Scott Keane made two phone calls on the evening he died. Uh, one was to Patty, the other was to a pay as you go uh, number as untraceable. What about CCTV? Anything? Uh, nothing out of the ordinary. We've had a crime scene report from Scott Keane's flat, Mom. No prints on the murder weapon. Oh. Mom, I just pulled up Scott Keane's bank statements. Um, he's used his debit card in quite a few places. He certainly got about. And if he's doing jobs for the site, it might be work-related. Hmm. Let's want to check on his plates, uh, build up a timeline, see where he's been. And meanwhile, we've paid a visit to his father-in-law. 
ex-detective inspector John Brace, who was also a regular down at the Seagull, and is currently serving 10 years in Cosway for perverting the course of justice, bribery, misconduct in a public office. I mean, the list is as long as your arm. Didn't you help put him away, ma'am? Aye. But truth be told, we should have acted sooner. I mean, we all heard the rumours. And Brace was in the frame for Marshburn's disappearance. And Scott Keane just happens to be married to his daughter. Now, that can't be just a coincidence. We know that Brace wangled Keane a job with his siddons. Yeah. Now, that makes me think he's still working for them. Or else he's got something on them. Uh, Mom, I've been looking at the Sidden Halls and planning applications. Uh, I spoke to a guy called Ewan Ackley. He's been quite vocal in his objections to the build. Uh, he claims he was threatened by Alex Sidden. Well, it seems to be a family trait. Right, I want that witness brought in for questioning first thing tomorrow morning. I'm telling you, the Siddons are behind all of this. It's got nothing to tie them to Scott Keane's murder. Well, you better knuckle down and find me something then. Where do you put your feet? Floorboards are rotten. Well, this building's being condemned. Well, that's why I'm telling you. So what are we doing here, anyway? I'm just getting a feel for the place. Because this is where Robbie was last seen alive. Hmm. Now, the file says a fella who was working that night saw Marshburn leave with a girl. You only got his word for that. Well, what if he's telling the truth? She could be the lead we've been searching for. 23 years ago. Now all we've got to do is find her. Well, someone else might have seen them leave. Maybe even followed them out. There's a fire escape down here. Handy exit. Aye, very handy. Where are you going? <sighs> Maybe they left the club via that fire escape. Well, come on. So what if someone followed them out, killed Robbie out here? Hmm? Now look, 
That must lead to the culvert. See if you can get that shifted. Well, not without a crowbar in my pocket. Well, have a go. This has got to be how they dumped the body. This has not been opened in years. Now, what if Scott Keane found out that Robbie was buried there? Maybe overheard something the Siddons had said. No one even knew those tunnels were there. Well, I knew they were there. Now, what if he was in on this? And he was supposed to shift that body before the contractors moved in. If there's any evidence in there, that's a job for forensics. Well, get them down here. Well, come on, then. Are you going to tell me or what? What? Well, something is clearly niggling you about the case. Fine. Keep it to yourself as usual. That funeral brace mentioned. It was Hector's. It was me dad's. They were mates. Me dad, Brace, and Robbie Marshburn. That's him in the photo, taken at the seagull. Look at them, thick as thieves. when you show up. You must have heard we found the body over at Seagull. I would get thrown soon enough on the doors. Oh, it's still moonlighting then. I get work at the clubs when I can. I'm too old to be grafting down here. Mm. Well, we've ID'd this body as Robbie Marshburn. That fellow who beat you up. Couldn't tell you who that was. Mm. Well, we could have banged him up if you testified against him. Sitting too, for that matter. I shouldn't be talking. Ah, it's all right, love. Just catching up. I remember where it got me last time. A stay in hospital. Marked as a snitch be Robbie. I still think it was us that brought John Brace down. Oh, all them years later. Mm. Well, you answer my questions, I'll get out of your hair. Now I need you to think back. When was the last time you saw Robbie Marshburn? Must have been the night he went missing. I was uh, working down the club. You were at the Seagull? Sutton's birthday party? Hey, Robbie got work on the door for a few of the doctors. They just had you beaten up. That was his way of keeping you in line. Well, then, you must have seen all the comings and goings. You must have seen all the names on his guest list. Ah, Sutton kept them entertained in a VIP area. What's this? Big wigs with deep pockets. Not to mention a few bent coppers. Coppers like John Brace. Oh, aye. He was there. So, did anything happen that I should know about? Ah, come on, Glenn. It's here or at the station. And now that Robbie and Sidden had words out on the terrace, Elaine broke it up and sent them back inside. Did she? So, this kick off, is that when Robbie left? I think he left later. But one was girls. No. Was this the lass? I, I, I couldn't tell you that. Just look. No, there were dozens of them worked there, off and on. At, at least he got what was due to him. Hey? Eh? Regulars back in the day caught on camera. We've got Robbie Marshburn missing and found dead. We've got John Brace now banged up for corruption. 
uh, there's a fella with glasses and the other fella, well, that's me dad. Well, what does Hector have to do with all of this? Nothing, but he sat there in the photo, so I'm putting it out there. We think that the woman in the photograph was one of Robbie Marshburn's girls. Yeah, we've had a witness come forward, said he saw Marshburn leave with a woman that night. Glenn Paulson, who also said he saw Brace there. That's his alibi, Kaput. Yeah, Paulson blew the whistle on Robbie. Now he's tied me sudden. Yeah, he retracted his statement as soon as someone put him in hospital. Now here's a man who knows firsthand what it's like to cross the Siddons. Mom. What? I've just taken a statement from you and Ackley. Who? Yeah, that fella that objected to the seafront development. <gasps> well, he was down at the site protesting and got into bother with Scott Keane. Uh, Keane must have told Alex Sidden because the next minute a couple of heavies turned up at Ackley's doorstep. Did they indeed? Well, look who it isn't. Oh, just passing, are we? My mother can't visit her own son. Ah, well, since I've caught you, I've got a few more questions for you. How well did you know Robbie Marshburn? He worked at the club, that's all. Well, we know Robbie and your husband argued on the night he disappeared. If they're dead, I don't remember. No, it was you who got between them. I don't know anything about that. What exactly was the nature of Scott Keane's employment at the site? Errands, mainly. Pickups, deliveries, general supplies. Didn't rate him, then? He was lazy. Work shy. I'd have never taken him on. Except your dad insisted that you hired him. Which makes you wonder who's really in charge here, doesn't it? Said he was doing an old maid a favour. I didn't see the harm. Did Scott tell you about this running with you and Ackley? He might have mentioned it, I. Said he'd been a nuisance down at the site. Well, you and claims he was threatened a couple of days later. Some thugs turned up at his house. That was nothing to do with me. Hmm. I've already told you. That's not how I do things. This business is legit. All right. Fella with the glasses. Any ideas? The one standing next to your dad? That's Michael Clairthorpe. Did the books part-time at the club. He local? Used to be. Couldn't tell you where he is now. Yeah, we'll check him out, Michael Clay up. What about the woman? I think she called herself Mary Frances. Junkie. I think she took off after Robbie disappeared. Ended up back on the streets, I expect. Alex Sidden claims he barely knew Scott. She did a few odd jobs for him. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? What if his old man's still running things? Using Alec as a respectable front with the lane acting as go between. Like father, like son, if I know the Siddons. Apple never falls too far from the tree. I'm telling you, if we uncover what happened to Robbie, we'll find out who killed Scott. Oh, Mum, I got in touch with a contact at Company's house. They tracked down a copy of the Siegel's old business register, people with significant control. Brace's ex-wife owned a stake in the club, 25%. Justine Brace? Now, what would she want with shares in the club? She also chairs this private investment initiative. They manage the waterfront redevelopment. Now, what did I tell you? Hmm? Long arms. John asked me to purchase the shares in my name. He said it was a good investment. Ah, oh, put your wife's name on the company register. That's a clever way to hide your assets. I sold my stake in the business when I filed for divorce. It's been years since we've had any contact. Ah, oh, but you still have plenty of dealings with the Siddons, don't you, Justine? 
at seafront development? That sounds like a conflict of interest mm. to me. Alex Sidden is a respectable businessman. He's nothing like his father. You sure about that? Only one of his employees was murdered two days ago. Scott Keane? I've never heard of Scott Keane. As for my dealings with the Siddons, it's all perfectly transparent and on public record. Oh, well, I'm pleased to hear it. I mean, it wouldn't look good, would it? What with you being a magistrate and all. Did you know we found Robbie Marshburn's body? His name came up at John's trial. He'd been missing ten years by then. If that was all, I have a bail here in pending. Did you know about your husband's affair? That fling that landed him with a daughter? It wasn't an affair. She was one of those sluts from the club. John tried to persuade her to get rid of him. The girl was determined to have the child. She was after money, of course. So what? He paid her off? He told me he had dealt with it. Said she had left town. We went to visit your dad. Ah, he rang us this morning. Asked us to look out for you. I told you, I don't need looking after. It must have been hard for you. On your own. Your mum and dad not around. I didn't meet my dad until I was a teenager, just before he went to prison. So how'd the pair of you link up? I think he contacted my adoptive parents. I only wish they were still around now. Against the rules, that, isn't it? He might have pulled a few strings. So all these visits you've made to the prison, you must have talked about his trial. The corruption charges. Aye. He said he'd been stitched up. <laughs> of course he did. Look, I know he's not perfect. I just wanted someone there, I suppose. Someone I could call family. Ever talk about your mum? Your real mum? No, not really. But he must have told you her name. I couldn't bear it now. But I just didn't want me. He gave us up for adoption for years after I was born. How did she die? Cancer. Mary Frances Lascola. That's the name on the birth certificate. And that's the woman in your photograph. Father unknown. There's a court order, 1994. Child was removed due to concerns for her welfare. What well, says here? Mum was a heroin addict. Mm. Looks like she was trying to get her life back on track. Why'd you say that? A few years before that, she spent some time in a refuge. Any idea where? Freddy doesn't say. And his address in North Shields, Curlew Street. The clinic made a note of it when they took down her blood type. Uh, any chance I can hang on to this? I need that as well. Thanks, Pet. I don't think Patty's mum wanted to give her up. I didn't have a choice by the sound of it. No, it was Brace. Sold his daughter the story her mum didn't want her. Playing her for sympathy. Yeah, but what was he trying to hide? Hmm? Apart from the obvious. Mary Frances Lascola. Now, this is her in the photo standing next to Brace, and she's the mother of his child. Now, we think she was a sex worker to feed a heroin habit. I ran a search, no record of any death certificate. Could be a work name. No, that's the name on Paddy's adoption papers. We could talk to Brace again. He's got to know more than he's letting on. No, oh, not without any hard evidence. It just rings around us. Get on, uh, Cosway, Nick. Let's find out if Brace has had any other visitors. I'll pull out any cases that might fit this profile. George, we know she was in a refuge before she got pregnant. That was, what, 1992? So we'll check out the refuges and charities in the area. Jack. Yep. Mum, 
I have some uh, intel on uh, the mystery man in the photo. Elaine Sidden was right. Michael Claythorpe. Good. Well, let's go have a talk with him, see if he can add to any of this. There's something else, Kenny? Um, th those bank statements of your dad's you asked me to go through? I found a standing order for a thousand pounds a month going into his account. The payments were made by Leonard Sidden. Can we just keep this between ourselves for the minute, Kenny? Just for the minute. Mum's the one, Mum. I looked after Sidden's accounts for several years. We've done a few months before the fire. Mm -hmm. Consorting with gangsters? You don't look the type, Mr. Clayful. That'd be the reason Sidden hired us. My clients are mainly small-time businesses. Nothing attracts us too much attention. Well, you must have known Sidden was involved in criminal activity. I just did the math. <sighs> look, this is all off the record, love. I just want to solve these murders. Plenty of people taking bribes. I've tempted by the offer of easy cash. Once I'd bitten, it's in on them. Well, it looks like you've been bought in this photo, love. <laughs> he always looked after his friends. Anything you wanted was there for the taking. What about this lass? Mary Frances worked in the club. I didn't have much to do with all that. Off the books, were they? Put down as expenses. What about this fella? Have we come across him? Scott Keane. Now, he worked for Sidden's son, Alec, and we think they were up to their old tricks. I haven't had anything to do with Sidden's in years. Sorry, I can't help. Look, jump in. Uh, there's another fella in the photo. Uh, here, look. Hector Stanhope. What about him? He was on some sort of retainer. Regular payments from Sydney. You're Hector's daughter. Should have made the connection. <laughs> uh, well, he's been dead a few years now. It was your dad's job to keep Siddons entertained. They called him the R&R &R man. Rest and recuperation. I even came up to the house once with Brace. Y your dad drove us over to Alnham Manor for a shoot. Slipped the gamekeeper at backhander. Oh, well, that sounds like my dad. So, um... Those payments... were nothing to worry about. What's going on, boss? Oh, nothing. A another conversation that I'm not party to. Look, what is this? Are you keeping tabs on us or what? Well, someone's got to. Look, it looks like I was right to be concerned. Sidden had been giving me dad money, regular payments. So if this was a cover-up, maybe they were paying him to keep silent. Did Hector ever mention Robin Marshburn after he disappeared? Not once. Which tells you he had something to hide. Oh, come on. What have you always told me about not jumping to conclusions? 
Look, when Brace was arrested, my dad was there in court, sat in that gallery every day. He must have known what Brace had been up to, covering for Sidden. In his last years, you know, he, he couldn't even... Creeps up on you or something like that. I'd have been inclined to forgive him anything. Jack. I've had a breakthrough with one of those charities, ma'am. Women's Refuge in Whitburn. One of the councillors here remembers Mary Frances. Yeah, well, text us the address. We'll meet you there. You told my officer you remembered her. We got friendly when I was staying here. So you weren't always a counsellor, then? I'd been in an abusive relationship. This place got me back on track. I decided to train up and give something back. I've been a counsellor ten years now. So what do you remember about Mary Frances? She'd had a rough life. Left her distrustful of people. Always looked out for the other girls, though. Even let one girl move in with her. Now, we know she was an addict. But you need to be clean to get a bed here, don't you? She didn't use while she was staying in the refuge. I know she stayed off the drugs for a while. Got herself a bit of waitress in work. Then her pimp tracked her down with a fix. She ended up back at the club. This pimp? Is that Robbie Marshburn? He decided who she went with, who she mixed with. Even broke two of her ribs. Did you know she got pregnant? Baby was taken into care. So did she tell you who the father of the baby was? Was it a copper? Name of John Brace? Aye. All the girls knew Brace. When Mary Frances was his favourite. Keep going. Keep going. Stop, stop it now. Do you see how I stand, Hope? Like that hunch of yours was right. There is someone else buried down there. Right, well, these are definitely the bones of a young female. I'd put her age at late teens, early 20s, possibly. That, well, Mary Frances was no older than that when she disappeared. Wisdom teeth are just beginning to erupt. You see these sutures here in the skull just beginning to fuse. Mm. Any startling insights as to cause of death? Strangulation. Drowning, positional asphyxia. I ran a GCSA tissue analysis and she did test positive for heroin. Oh, oh she must have started using again when she gave up her bairn. Oh, that's right, she had a daughter. Daughter? Two grandkids? Oh, well. I can run an mtDNA test. We can find out for certain if they're related. Every cloud. Well, I'll go talk to Patty. Right. I don't know how to break this to your love, so I'm just going to come out with it. We found another body down at the building site. Ray, so why are you telling me? Because there's a chance it might be your man. And I need to do a, a swab test to get your DNA profile to see if there's a familial match. And what if I didn't want to know? Well, that is your choice, love, obviously. But it would help us to find out who she is. All right, OK, aye. That's it. Now then, on these times, 
when you visit your dad. Does he ever talk about a fella called Robbie Marshburn? You're asking me that? No. No, it is important, love. Sometimes I... He said it was Robbie's fault he ended up inside. Rude the day he ever got mixed up with him. And did you share that with your husband? I suppose I must have done. He always wanted to know how the visits went. Right, thanks, love. He lied to us, didn't he? Me dad. She didn't die of cancer. Her name is Mary Frances. Oh, don't. <sighs> Must have been very hard for her to give up her bed. Because I think she wanted to keep you. She left us a um, locket. Hmm? Like a keepsake sort of thing. I'll show you. I kept it safe under the bed. It's not here. Scott was the only other person that knew it was there. I want someone back over at Scott Keane's flat. He's been digging around asking questions. I want to know if he found anything. Right, and while you're at it, Jack, see if you can find a locket. It belonged to Mary Frances. Now, I've got a treat for you. I need you to get over to your old patch, those clubs in Wall's End. I mean, Scott Keane was a regular feature. Find out who he's been talking to. I checked in with Cosway Nick, Brace's recent visitors. No contact with the Siddons. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be that daft, would they? I bet his ex-wife, she paid him a visit two days ago. Did she? Didn't she say that she'd not seen him in years? Aye, she did. So that wouldn't have been a social call. Get your coat. So why the sudden need to pay him a visit? You came to the office asking questions. He almost ruined both of us. Still, you're doing very well for yourself these days, aren't you? All this investment initiative. Ah, you've got a lot to lose. This all goes pear-shaped. We're investigating allegations of threats and bribes by Sidden Holdings and any associates that are implicated. That includes you, Pet. Now, you must have known what your husband was up to all those years. I knew about the bribes, the backhanders, the other women. But to father a child with a prostitute was too much. I couldn't let that get out. But it was you, wasn't it? You shopped your husband. He still has no idea. We found a second body buried with Marshburn. It's a woman, matches the description of Mary Frances. It can't be. What were your movements on Monday evening? I was chairing a meeting, the investment initiative. Was Alex sitting with you? As a matter of fact, it was. And what time did this meeting finish? It must have been around 10. Why do you ask? Oh, just checking, love. Happens to be the evening Scott Keane was murdered. Do you want my advice, love? Get yourself a solicitor. She knows exactly what she's doing. She hasn't severed ties with Brace at all. I'm gonna go rattle his cage.
found another body buried next to the club. And we've reason to suspect it's Mary Frances. Well, at least have the decency to acknowledge that you knew her, seeing as she's the mother of your daughter. Well, you arrested her for soliciting back in 1989. She was subsequently released without charge. So what, did you come to some sort of arrangement, did you? She gets protection in return for sexual favours. Robbie allowed that, did he? Well, the pair of them went missing round about the same time. But you told your missus Mary Frances had left town. So what, did Marshburn help you to kill her? Or did he just get in the way? I never laid a finger on either of them. And then all these years later, you set your son-in-law up with a job with the Siddons. Got a bit close to them, didn't he? Hmm? Maybe found out what had happened to Marshburn. Well, you couldn't have him walking around with that knowledge, could you? Patty might find out what you'd done. How could I have killed him locked up in here? Well, even if you didn't, you know who did. You'd love to solve this one, wouldn't you, pet? Prove your dad wrong when he said he didn't rate you. I think he didn't know what was going on. Hector was up to his neck in it. Malcolm. The second body. We don't know who it is yet, but I can tell you that it's not Mary Frances. So I got some DNA out of the marrow from one of these long bones here. I ran just against the swab that we took from Patty, and the sample was only a partial profile. Yeah, so not enough to be certain. Yeah. Oh, enough to rule out a familial match. On top of that, we got hold of Mary Frances's medical records. Now it appears, back in March 92, Mary was admitted into hospital with fractures to her third and fourth intercostal oh. ribs. That does tally with what the woman at the refuge told us. Well, I double-checked, I took some x-rays, and these ribs are clean. So if it's not Mary Frances, who the hell is it? Oh, come on, George, we're looking for a runaway. How hard can it be? I've extended the date and search areas. These cases are still unresolved. The woman at the refuge said there was a last stage with Mary Frances in North Shields, around about 95. But we don't know where she was from. Could have been from anywhere. There's um, a Hexham one. Have a look at this. Last from Hexham. First reported missing March 1995. Yeah, well, that could be her. Uh, Rebecca Murray, 17. A dad failed the report at uh, Hexham Nick. Said he'd rode with his daughter and she'd walked out. Parents made several attempts to get her back. Eventually she disappeared. Last known address, no shields. Curlew Street. George, I could hug you. Oh, just look at her. 17. She's been buried longer than that. Dental records have now confirmed the ID of our second body as Rebecca Murray, age 17. Now, this could mean Mary Frances is still alive. I might even know what happened to her. Mark, go through Scott Keane's phone records again. Go back a couple of months. Check his emails, social media, everything. We checked out his flat, no sign of any locket, nothing's been signed in as evidence. Oh. Uh, we did get a fresh statement from one of the neighbours. Uh, she had a run-in with a guy when she was trying to park on uh, Crossfield Street. Crossfield Street? Well, that's a main road, isn't it? Yeah. So there'll be cameras. Check it out! Mum, I spoke to the landlord of the social club. I know he knew Scott Keane well enough. 
He'd been in uh, the club, shooting his mouth off about his contacts with the Siddons. One of the doormen had to have words with him. Which doorman was this? DC Eistat have presented the room. Now then, Glenn, you've been working the doors at a social club down on the Faro Road? Hmm? Like I told you, I'll, I'll get it where I can. Yeah, so you must have crossed paths with this fella. Scott Keane. We know he worked for the Siddons. Mm. Got a bit of a mouth on him by all accounts. He started asking questions about the old days. When Robbie Morshburn ran things down at the port. Ah, so you set him straight, did you? A talk like that can still get you into trouble. Oh, ain't that the truth? Because it was murdered a few days later. Now, this is Rebecca Murray. Her last worked at the Seagull. Now, her body was found next to Robbie's. 17 years old when she died. Just about the same age as your youngest. Yeah, well, a nice kid. Was she one of Robbie's girls? No. She worked shifts as a barmaid. Kept us topped up with drinks. Now, was she the lass who left the club with Robbie that night? Given that, so, uh, it was busy. No, I'm not sure I buy that, love. Now, you were obviously fond of the girl. Would you let her leave on the arm of a violent pimp, one who'd already beaten you up? I would have stopped him. Or maybe you went after him. You seriously think that I, that I killed Robbie? No, oh, did you? If you want to point the finger, you're going to talk to Leonard Sidden. She was serving him drinks that night. Donald up at the nines in his private bar. disturbing a family get-together. Well, we can talk here or down at the station. Your choice. Rebecca Murray. Never seen her before. No. Barmaid. You'd have hired her. I found out she was underage. Had to let her go. You weren't concerned when she disappeared. <laughs> Barmaids come and go. I've got better things to do than look for runaways. Well, her body was found yesterday, dumped in the same place as Robbie Marshburn. And you thought you'd try and pin this on me? Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got guests. Aye, you get back to your guests. Enjoy it while it lasts. Why can't you leave things alone instead of dragging it all back up? Careful, Vera. You might not like what you find. Oh. That contract audit you asked for, ma'am, the waterfront redevelopment, threw up some interesting reading. Anything that implicates the Siddons? Um, a payment made to Hilton's for £50,000 two weeks before they pulled out the bidding. Get Alex Sidden in here for questioning. He's in this up to his eyeballs. Mom, I've been going through Scott's phone logs again. Uh, that pays you go number he called the evening he was killed. Yeah, untraceable, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he called the same number two months beforehand. Uh, the same day he used his debit card. It was in a cafe up in uh, Mona. Mona? That's up in the borders, isn't it? Bit out of the way for a delivery. Has anyone checked this? Yeah, well, I just presumed he was off on one of his errands. Well, that's the trouble with presuming, DC Edwards. Sometimes you miss things. Aiden, get off home. We've got an early start. We're going to Scotland.
I'm afraid we've just closed. Won't be open again till six. Well, then we've got time for a chat. Very Francis, isn't it? So how did Scott Gain track you down? I uh, found Patty's profile on Facebook. Some photos of her kids. I just wanted to put myself out there. What, you sent her a message then? I didn't have the guts. I saw on her homepage she was married to Scott. Seemed easier to message him. So when was this? Must be over a year ago. He messaged us back, told us Patty wasn't interested. I don't think she knew about that, love. Well, I thought that was that. I told myself it was all for the best. So what changed? He called us uh, a few weeks ago, asked if we could meet. And that's when he came up here? I wasn't even sure if he was genuine. Did he show you a locket that you'd given to Patty? How did you know? Well, we think he took it. He said they'd been having some problems. Wanted to make things up to her. And he thought if he could tell Patty he'd trap down her man. Yeah, he'd be in with a chance of patching things up. Now, we think his death is connected to two other murders. And one of them being Robbie Marshburn. We found his body a few days ago, buried a couple of yards away from the seagull. Oh, sorry. It's been a while since I heard his name. No, that's OK, love. But we do need to ask you some questions about that night he went missing. Now, were you at the club that night? I only stayed for a couple of hours. I knew Brace was going to ask us to sit with him. Couldn't bear to even look at him by then. So what about this lass? Name of Rebecca Murray. We believe she may have stayed with you for a while. Only for a few weeks, that's all. She just started working at the club. She called herself Bex. Well, we think she was murdered round about the same time as Robbie. Her body was found in the same place as his. And we were hoping you might be able to tell us what had happened to her. Bex had seen how much money the other girls were making. She was young, just a kid. No idea what the job entailed. I warned Robbie to leave her be, but Sidden had other ideas. <sighs> Maybe if I'd stayed and looked after her instead of leaving her there on her own. <laughs> now, don't dwell on ifs and buts, love. That won't change anything. So, was that when you came up here? Well, Robbie had gone missing, so... I thought I'd take my chances. Clean break. Well, he can't hurt you now, love. And neither can Brace. I thought about Patty every day. Even after everything he'd done to us. She was still my little girl. Good afternoon, Mr. Sidden. You better have a good reason for bringing me in. Oh, I. Your signature on several incriminating documents. Transfers of large sums of money to business associates. I already told you that that's not the way I operate. Well, something stinks. And I think Scott Keane was onto you. Hmm? He was more than just a gopher, wasn't he? Scott Keane was no one. That's why you couldn't sack him, because he knew too much about the Sidden operation. Ended up dead. He was asking the wrong people questions. That's, that's all I know. Well, I saw you having words. Did you threaten him, did you? The same as you threatened you and Ackley when he got in your way. You're not going to pin this on me. Why not? You're a Sidden. You always will be cut from the same cloth as your dad. I'm a better man than he will ever be. Well, you can just sit there and take a hit for him. 
Or you can tell me what you know about his hand in all of this. They must have forged those signatures. It's no worse. He promised me when I took over the business, he said he'd let me do things my way. Ah, now here's the thing about Leonard Sidden Love. His word never did count for much. Look, if you're protecting him, that makes you an accessory. And I don't think you'd want to live with that. Not if you are a better man than he is. DCI staff have presented the room. Now, we have a statement from your son, Alex Sidden, implicating you in the murder of Rebecca Murray. Oh, yeah. A confession you made him 23 years ago. This is all a pack of lies. Kids, eh? No respect these days. If you had any yourself, you'd understand. Mm -hmm. We also have a statement from Mary Frances Lascola, a former hostess at your nightclub. Now, she maintains that Robbie Marshburn procured Rebecca Murray at your request. That bent copper's bit on the side. She's as big a liar as he is. Mm. But that's not all she told us, love. Oh, it's not looking good for you, pet. I think Rebecca Murray was murdered in your club. I think it was you who killed her and you covered it up. So what did you do? Ply the lass with drink and drugs and then pass around your punters? She was already dead when we found her. She'd taken a hit of something, passed out on the bathroom floor, choked on her own vomit. We tried to bring her round. I don't know what happened. We? What? You said we tried to bring her round. So who was with you? Robbie Marshburn? Did you ask him to deal with it, that row out on the terrace? I swear I didn't kill her. I just needed her out of the club. OK, so we got her out of there. He carried her out that fire exit. Got her onto the beach and then what? You killed him, too, to keep him quiet. Dumped the pair of them in that tunnel. I've no idea what happened to Robbie. I thought he was keeping his head down because it was him that had killed her. That talk on the terrace was the last time I saw him. Would Sidden kill Marshburn? There's no way he'd have gone to the police. Well, if he suspected that Robbie had killed Rebecca. Hmm. Remembered Mary Frances well enough. Aye. Her reaction when we said we'd found Rebecca's body. What about it? She didn't seem very surprised, did she? Do you think she already knew? Now, if they really did find Rebecca dead on the bathroom floor... She can't have been the woman who left the club with Robbie. Get hold of Mary Frances in Mourner. I'm telling you, Mourner's the key. Where are you going? Fishing. Come on. Ben, that CCTV coverage just come through from Crossfield Street. I think that could be the fella who argued with Scott King. I can't see his face. Mm. Can you freeze frame the plate? Yeah. I'll pull it up on the PNC.
I know who killed Scott Keane. Michael Claythorpe. We're on our way to his now. You might want to send back up. He's there. He's at our house. Apologies, Vera. You're not going to invite me in? <laughs> You're not done the place up, then? Ah, uh, suits me the way it is. <laughs> so... I found Mary Frances. Oh, I. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, though. You hid her well enough. Then won't Robbie find her? <laughs> well, you knew Robbie was already dead. It was you what dumped him in that tunnel, left him to rot. I'd seen the way he treated her. She was too good for that place. confided in you, did she? A lot of people did, Vera. Not least, your father. Uh, <laughs> that's why you're here, is it? To enlighten me. She rang us from a phone box that night. Mary Frances. <laughs> Hysterical. Said she found Bex on the bathroom floor. Bobby said it was an overdose. Got in my car. Drove over there. Found them. On the beach. With the body. She was crying. Screaming. I'd never seen anyone in such a state. to stop him. You can see that, can't you? Else he would have killed her too. So instead you caved his head in, dumped his body with Rebecca in that tunnel, and then, as cool as you like, you drove Mary Frances up to Mourner. I'm right, aren't I? Set her up. Somewhere safe, where no one could find her. Ah. Or you could have just called the police, love. As soon as she rang you. <laughs> Sins would have killed both of us. <laughs> Twenty-three years you got away with it. Case closed. The pair of them forgotten. And then Scott Keane shows his face. Aye, that was unfortunate. Yeah, he would probably have agreed with you, love. When he went round there to warn him off. I don't believe you. You went round there to shut him up for good. He was after money. He said he was going to tell Patty the truth about her mother's past. Now, you left him for dead while he went looking for that locket. The one thing that linked Mary Frances to her past, to all of this. She tell you he'd been in touch, hmm? confide in you, and you were scared he was on to you. I wanted to protect her. I couldn't let him hurt her. Don't you see? It's you who doesn't see, pet. Scott was asking all those questions about her past because he needed to be sure that Mary Frances was who she claimed to be. Patty's mom. 
He just wanted his life back with his wife and bairns. That was it. He didn't need to die. Did Mary Frances have any part in the death of Robbie Marshburn or Rebecca Murray? No. She was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hasn't she suffered enough? Tell me, how much did my dad really know? He had his suspicions about Robbie being a wrong one. And the girl, Rebecca? He didn't them go quiet about that. But Sidden paid him off, blood money. Aye, he took the money. Your dad knew how dangerous Sidden was. It was his way of protecting you. Mr. Claythorpe, this way. I thought you were going to be next. Nah, no, he was more sort of a confessional. Brace's trial. All those hours my dad spent in court, he wasn't there looking out for a mate. He was there to see justice done. <laughs> the day that bastard was sent down, my dad cut him dead. <laughs> Where are you going? Cup of tea. Go on, get a wiggle on, the tide's coming in. Uh, Go on.
Well, as one great series comes to an end for the time being, another one begins here on ITV. All New Endeavour starts next Sunday at 8. Now, we have another brand new series starting on Tuesday night at 9 that sees Martin Clunes embark on an epic journey discovering the islands of America. Next this Sunday night is all the latest ITV news.